So Steven Crowder, like a, a bit ago, put out a documentary called Inside the China Plot to Destroy America from Within. So I, for one, want to know about the secret plot that China is using to infiltrate America. My money is uh, that he's going to argue that TikTok is turning American kids gay, and that's weakening America. Okay, that that's that is what I think he's going to talk about. Sounds like important news. I know all Steven Crowder content is very important to me and clearly to the people who watch my channel, because every time I make a Steven Crowder video, y'all y'all keep watching. So I'm going to keep making them and I'm going to keep making fun of that uh, goony little motherfucker who, uh, you know, very likely beats his wife. At least he used to in the past, when he had one. Anyway, let's go. Also, I, it just occurs to me as I click on this and read or hear the uh, opening music, there's like a 90% chance he does yellow face in this, isn't there? There's like a there's like a night there's like a ninety percent chance he dresses up as a caricature. Oh boy. Criminal activity has become part of China's strategy to grow its power in conjunction with its authoritarian statecraft. Can I can I just we're we're not even like ten seconds in. The the juxtaposition of Chinese state power and then the state of Oklahoma, my god. Yo, uh, a woman named Ying Chan Wang and a man named Stephen Ho. They don't f around and they're not gonna take your feet. No one's gonna see you again. We knew going out that he said that he didn't want to come back to Oklahoma, he'd be dead if he come back to Oklahoma. Oh, okay. So, so they're they're gonna destroy America by starting weed farms in Oklahoma. That's are are you are you are you fucking with me? Is that the premise of this entire video? Oh my god, dude! All right. I, I'm just mentally pre I again I haven't pre-watched I I never pre-watched and if if I do I tell you guys but uh man the premise of this is already rocky as hell what you just saw is a small preview of the result of countless hours uh, of in-depth reporting open source research and undercover work that was directly informed by your exclusive the tips. Now, what we've play. discovered here was a series of clandestine foreign actors collaborating on United States soil in the realms of drugs, human trafficking, murder, espionage. And it's not the plot of a Mission Impossible movie. For I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait. Where the deer and the antelope play. Song. What is this song? Home on the Range. He's he's backing himself up with the with Home on the Range. My God. I'm gonna go to bed. I I I, I want to to take take me take 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 me to Sleepy Town. Fortunately, everyone's least favorite Scientologist is nowhere to be found. What you're about to see what? is a true story. That doesn't narrow of how down. international organized crime connected to one of the most powerful governments in the world. It's foreshadowing, has taken over Middle America, and how it threatens to do the same. Until the next oh, Across he's going to argue United that States. it's fentanyl and weed.
In 2018, Oklahoma legalized the medical use of marijuana after a statewide referendum passed with 57% of the vote. Now, pause. Let me be clear here. This piece has nothing to do with whether you're against cannabis legalization, whether you're for uh -huh. it, whether you partake or are Mennonite. This is about the unintended or fully intended fallout mm -hmm. as it relates to American landowners, taxpayers, and the communist Chinese government. Few quick numbers for you. Since July 2021, the state has collected over $155 million in marijuana-related tax revenue. Now, we've all heard for decades, and I once believed this too, that legalizing or decriminalizing drugs uh, would eliminate the black market. In Oklahoma, the exact opposite has happened. There has been a, an unprecedented number of illegal operations, grow farms, growing at rates, breaking records, completely unseen before. The real problem is the owners and the players milking this cash cow for all it's worth at your expense. Basically, think less Jeff Spicoli. You dick! And more communist tyrant El Chapo. Now, the implications go far beyond state or even uh -huh. national borders. And they constitute a full-blown threat to America's national security. To put it simply, this may surprise a lot of people, Oklahoma is the weed capital of the United States. No, not Colorado, not California, not even New York. Oklahoma, which has forced them to change their how, state. How, okay, wait, how true is that? Um, which state grows the most weed? Colorado is home to the greatest volume of ca cannabis production in the United States in 2022. Okay, let's see. Twenty twenty. Okay, in the top five, we have Colorado, Oregon, California, Washington, and Michigan, and Oklahoma isn't even in the top ten. So I think he might just be lying. Let's see, is it even on this list? No. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll get a better result if we type, uh, illegal cannabis production by state. Uh... Sales of illicit cannabis by state. Ah, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to make an account. I'm not doing that. Anyway, from what I can tell, this does not seem accurate. State motto to more than just tornadoes and chaps. Here are a few more numbers to show you uh, just how much of a weed haven Oklahoma actually is. Uh, Two thousand six hundred eighty-three dispensaries in Oklahoma. This is the most in the nation and more than double the number located in the number two state, California. Twice the dispensaries of California, 840. Yeah, yeah, but twice the dispensaries doesn't mean that there's twice as much weed. They have more dispensaries because everything's a billion miles away from each other in, in Oklahoma. You got you got to drive like an hour to get anywhere in the state. So they have more small dispensaries for small towns. That, that makes sense. Forty-four million grams of cannabis packaged in Oklahoma in 2023. That's 64 times the amount that consumers in Oklahoma could possibly need. Forty-six hundred and seventeen. That's the number of active growers just in 2024. And that's only exceeded by California with 5,400.
they have more active growers, but that doesn't mean they're making, they're growing more weed. It means that there are smaller farms. My, my God, this, this isn't hard. 191. At its peak, Oklahoma had nearly 14,000 licenses. The point is, a lot of cash, a lot of THC. One grower who asked to remain anonymous due to his ongoing involvement uh, in the state's cannabis industry laid out exclusively to Mug Club Undercover here why he was attracted to Oklahoma, even without the chaps. Real estate's real cheap. Uh, the license, the, the barrier to entry was $2,500, which, I mean, looking back on it now, any, any person that sells any kind of drugs can come up with that to get a legal license, uh, which we've seen a lot of. But, uh, it was barrier to entry was cheap. You know, land, I paid like six grand for two and a half acres. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's nothing, you know? I mean, it's just very, very cheap out here, and this is gonna kind of be our American dream, you know, this is me getting away from having any physical labor, this is us having a family business with my dad, um, and it just didn't, it didn't turn out that way, but yeah, what brought us out there, she's just so cheap, and so affordable for a blue collar person. Man, what a shock. So Farmers a rush, try out new crops. As it were, filled with absolutely baked prospectors, but make no mistake, those seeking to take advantage of the conditions on the ground include a lot of less than scrupulous actors. And there's one specific group that has taken particular advantage of Oklahoma's. I'm very, very interested to see how Steven Crowder is going to try to spin legal weed farms. As like ne being nefar like nefarious, I'm, I'm very I'm very curious to see exactly how he goes about trying to do that. Oh oh no, the these nefarious foreigners are legally growing weed. The horror. Oklahoma has no cap on dispensaries and super cheap startup prices. There might be some truth to this. I, I'm not I'm not disputing that they have a lot of dispensaries. I'm sure they do. It, it's likely that the uh, lack of a cap on dispensaries and the super cheap startup prices contribute to the like small towns across Oklahoma being able to support a dispensary, right? Like that that makes sense. That makes sense to me. But again, just because there are more dispensaries doesn't mean that more weed is being sold through them than the ones in California. It, does that make sense? Also, how y'all doing in chat? You, you, you keeping it sleazy? You keeping it, keeping it streets ahead in chat? Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh. I actually uh, was not keeping up chat with chat. Uh, my, my chat got frozen, so uh, sorry about that, chat. Relaxed, chill industry standards. China. As it turns out, the only thing that these Chinese nationals like more than the marijuana industry. Okay, just just one. I, I know I'm I know I'm being real pause champ about all of this, but uh, just one quick uh, observation. Why is this video so dark? Like, li lighting wise. Why why is he in the shadows? Why? Like, why is he, like, melding in with the background? It's very weird, right? Like, almost... Uh, yeah, I guess he's trying to, like, convey the spookiness of this, but, like... I 
don't know. Seems weird. Seems weird. Something, something conspiracy lighting. It's just weird that conspiracy lighting and romance lighting are very similar. China, China stole his lights. <laughs> in the United States, he lost the lighting budget in the divorce. This is for the movie poster. They actually they removed Chewbacca. This character seems to be in the forefront, like he is the centerpiece. But here they depict him turned around, and he's not. He's not even looking towards the audience. So right here, and if you didn't know about this, man. It's crazy. You mean companies hire local localization teams in order to like advertise products more efficiently and effectively in in different markets? That's that's crazy. Who would who would ever think that they might do that? That's wild, dog. What does this have to do with weed? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> there's actually there's a story out there about this character and uh the, the race and gender swap. It's as a thought experiment, watch Star Wars again and tell me the empire is not literally yeah, exactly sorry. the same as the Chinese government. And to the surprise of absolutely no one in the history of Earth ever. Man, conservative media analysis is insane, dog. Watch Star Wars again, and uh, isn't it crazy how, how uh, the empire is China? Don't look up the interview where George Lucas says that the Empire is literally America and the rebels are literally the Viet Cong. Don't, don't look it up. Just don't do it. Frequently, these Chinese nationals are involved in, wait for it, highly illegal activity focused primarily on the black market. The Chinese involvement in the marijuana industry is so extensive that officials note it's actually more surprising if you encounter an illegal operation without connections to China. Of the 800 farms shut down from 2021 to 2023, 75% were linked directly to China. Here's Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics spokesperson Mark Woodward talking with us exclusively outlining the specific practices that Chinese crime organizations, part of the triads, how they infiltrate the industry. You would look over a fence and, and it's not two or three local guys growing marijuana like we've seen for the first couple of years. It would be 50 what would appear to be Asian uh, Chinese workers, which is not a problem as long as they're not you know, violating any laws. Sure. But when we would start getting calls that uh, from law enforcement out of state saying that we just intercepted a truckload of marijuana, the driver says it came off of so-and-so farm in Oklahoma, and we would start investigating that farm. And sure enough, it was one of these Chinese-operated farms where all the workers were Chinese, but yet the, the owner is listed as uh, a certain person, and it turns out that person is a secretary in a law office. So you're kind of going, okay, what's going on here? Um, and so we started looking into what's behind the ownership. Who are these people? And, and what we started to realize, it, and one of the things that was written into Oklahoma's law that's fairly unique, it said 75% of your ownership has to be somebody who's been an Oklahoma resident for two years. Well, obviously, that's a problem for a criminal organization linked to Chinese organized crime that's been growing in the Northern California desert, you know, for the last eight years, supplying black market marijuana to, to flush in New York. Now, before we get to the, the real crimes, this one's just kind of annoying. It's a dick move. They often steal massive amounts of water, electricity, leading to shortages for the local community. It's a crappy thing to do, but it's not as bad as um, the cold-blooded killing. Man, Stephen's going to be really shocked at the entire history of, like, ranching and, you know, normal, quote-unquote, farming. He's going to be real shocked at the long and storied history of literally all of those things when it comes to normal farmers. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yeah, the terms like robber, robber of barons, crazy stuff. Don't don't look it up. Just listen to his slop. Yeah, that's exemplified by the quadruple murder of four Chinese workers on a marijuana farm in Kingfisher County, Oklahoma, in November 2022. A search is ongoing for a quadruple murder suspect in Kingfisher County. Four bodies were found last night at a 10-acre marijuana grow farm as another person is hospitalized with injuries. Law enforcement's deployed massive resources in that search for the alleged attacker. The suspect, who was uh, eventually apprehended in Florida, uh, was a 45-year-old male named Chen Wu with the most predictable mugshot ever. He showed up on the farm demanding he immediately be paid 300000 as repayment for... The most predictable mugshot ever be because of his name and he looks Asian? Is that is that it? Was there more to the joke? I think we didn't get it. No, I think we didn't get it because it, it's just racism. It's not, it, there, there wasn't a joke. It was just, ha ha, he's Asian and he has an Asian name, you see. I think that's the extent of how clever Steven Crowder is capable of being, you know? Oh, God. For his investment in the operation. I've got to be very careful because it's still under investigation. Okay, yeah. not the investigating agency. But from what we can gather, this, this Chinese uh, individual uh, male showed up at the farm, uh, was demanding money that he felt he and or uh, others maybe in an investment group were, were owed oh. and had orders that if they don't pay, they're going to be uh, kill them because these are just workers. They can replace those workers. And when they said, we don't have the money, um, he started shooting them one at a time. Ended up killing four of them. A fifth person escaped and managed to uh, notify authorities. Most of the time, though, they will not leave a witness. Like a communist Chinese Warren Buffett. Thanks. Now he's been charged with four counts of first-degree murder and one count assault and battery with a deadly... Ah, uh, yes. Just like Warren Buffett has been. ...weapon, which when you think about it, that's the four counts of murder really should tie that up with a bow, but we'll toss in assault and battery while we're at it. Now, in a twist turn of fate, the survivor from Wu's murder spree actually ended up at the same Oklahoma jail where Wu was being held. And we were actually able to talk with Ken Thompson, a lieutenant at the Kingfisher County Sheriff's Office, to hear a little bit more about this specific case. Myself and another deputy actually went down to Florida to Miami-Dade and picked up the shooter and brought him back from, from Miami-Dade. Oh, yeah, I heard that he was... Him back up. I heard he was very hesitant to come back to Oklahoma because he thought he was going yeah, to get he killed. Was, <laughs> he, was a, he was a weird deal, of course. We knew... We knew going out that he said that he didn't want to come back to Oklahoma. He'd be dead if he come back to Oklahoma. And it was really weird because there's, uh, we got, I mean, he was cordial the whole time. He didn't speak a lot of English, but, but, uh, but, you know, we got him out. We got him out for the bathroom and we got him, and we fed him on the way back and stuff like that. And he just sat back there quietly. Well, well our last gas stop was Weber Falls once we crossed into Oklahoma. And you couldn't pry him out of the vehicle. Wow. It's like he knew that he was in Oklahoma and there was no way he was getting out of that car. I says, you'll be all right. We're, we're here. And he's like, no, no. I'm like, okay. So, so he left him in the car. Were you ever contacted or were you uh, ever in contact with anybody in China, to your knowledge? Like government officials, embassy, things like that? Somebody, there were a couple of guys that stopped in dispatch one day that... Uh, I think that said that they had the 911 center that said that they were connected to the Chinese embassy and they were referred to the OSBI. And the murders don't stop in Kingfisher County, or as it's known by some, namely when a good county to murder. According to Mr. Woodward of the OBN, right. they've uh, actually become quite common all over the state. We've seen others uh, on, a, on a not quite that scale. But certainly homicides have been something that we've seen a, a lot of uh, linked to, to marijuana since 2020 when, when we really saw the black market uh, migrate to our state. <laughs> now, when we asked the same local grower, uh, we showed you earlier why local authorities were so powerless to stop these illegal 
actions by Chinese nationals, like murder. Uh, he claimed it was because the cops were on the take. I've spoken with a couple law enforcement officials from Oklahoma, and they act like they have a handle on it. They're like, well, we're shutting down a bunch of these. We've come to the I didn't say, hey, this isn't for me. This is from law enforcement. I'm not. Uh, that's, that's the funniest thing we've heard yet. The police, especially in rural Oklahoma, are all on the take. Now, to be clear, we don't have any proof to back that claim up. And according to the official statistics from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics, they've cut the number of grow farms in the state from 9,400 in 2021 to 3,200 in 2023. So do with that uh, what you will. And the Kingfisher County Sheriff's Department was really pretty helpful with us in our investigation, so thanks to them. However, it, it does seem that nearly every week there's a report of a new grow operation being raided, so clearly there's a problem going on. Our team here, supported by viewers like you, by the way, thank you, actually visited uh, the site of one of these illegal grow operations that was shut down in Carter County, Oklahoma, in December 2023. All right, we are out here just north of Hilton, Oklahoma. That's about halfway between the border and Oklahoma City at the site of a shut down illicit marijuana farm that was taken down by the Bureau of Narcotics last month. And on the property, they found over 11,000 plants, which is about 300 pounds of marijuana. Now, uh, this is 46 year old Jimmy Dang that was arrested in connection with this. Oftentimes, what happens, what he's pending charges for, um, is straw ownership, where the company is set up by someone in Oklahoma ostensibly, but oftentimes it's someone that's out of state or a foreign national that's running this, these type of organizations. Now, there's a lot of problems here, and I, I don't say this lightly. What's bizarre about this to me is that, again, it, it's weed. Like, it's legal, it's legal, this is legal in America. You know, like, this isn't, and crazy nuke <laughs> type of thing. Like, it's legal all over the place. <sighs> yeah, 300 packs? It, like, ag again, th this, is, this is chump change. Why adding the wind sand in the video? Because they want to make it seem westy, you know, the wild west. All that jazz. These people are responsible for things like sex trafficking, human trafficking, illegal narcotic sale across state borders, whatever. They're finding fentanyl, they're finding ketamine, murder in Kingfisher County, right? Maybe the worst thing, and not the worst thing, but something that's really gonna get it to you is this man just left a million dogs out here abandoned, right? Like this little guy, completely abandoned. And I mean, it's not a human, but still, who's gonna take care of it? Clearly there was no responsibility there. And mama's over here. Yeah, I know. And, I mean, it is a dog, but this shows you how little these people care because here's mama's puppy right here, completely dead because some idiot decided he wanted to run drugs. By the way, all the references what? are available in the description or at lidospetter.com, and I encourage you to check them out. Uh, again, I feel like I feel like there's a bunch of leaping to conclusions here that is absolute. Yeah, the the site. Where's the citation here? We found a dog, and you know it's been left completely dead because the owner's off doing weed. Like, we need we need a bit more we need a bit more evidence of that on the camera. Okay. So now that you know Middle America is being taken over by murderous international crime organizations of largely people small and. Stature. Oh, there's Where the are they all coming from? How are they getting there? There we go. Good, good job, Steven. Asshole. So, to set the stage here, in December 2023, the southern border of the United States saw an all time record of 302,000 known crossings. And while a bulk of those are from places like Central America, You've got Venezuela. Uh, a not so insignificant number are coming from, let's say, China. 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 In 2023, at least 25,000 people illegally crossed from China, and that's more China. than the previous 10 years combined. A long line of Chinese migrants make their way to the U.S. through its border with Mexico. 
They've arrived after a treacherous journey through a route in Panama that has become increasingly popular. And this is why an open borders policy is not compassionate. It is the opposite of compassionate. These people are not dreamers just trying to get here seeking a better life to get a glimpse at the Statue of Liberty. A lot of these Chinese migrants, they arrive here in the United States with extensive debt, either owed to smugglers that helped them reach the United States or oh, to on, parties dude, back in China doing? with connections very often directly to the communist Chinese government. And it makes them a perfect target oh, enjoy. for the organized crime it's leaders marvelous. here in the United States of these Chinese grow farms to victimize. We have absolutely uh, intercepted individuals that have come straight to Oklahoma uh, from China across the, the border that have been smuggled in here. And that's why so much of them uh, are willing to work in horrible conditions because, and that's where you get into the labor traffic because many of them are now paying off this debt, quote unquote. They're, they're constantly reminded, remember we smuggled you into this country, we, we put up a, a you know, we, we put a lot of, on the line for you, so now you gotta work off this debt. Well, guess what, that debt never ends. And that's for females and males. So that's how a lot of these females get involved in prostitution. And a lot of these males end up working on marijuana farms for deplorable conditions and are scared to death to say anything because at least they've got a job and, and the hopes of being able to send money back home to their family. So, yes, absolutely. They're pouring across the border with the specific. You know, it'd be it'd be maybe a bit more believable that they have a genuine interest in this if they didn't ignore that. The vast majority of the people taking advantage of uh, migrants are not in fact Chinese triad weed growers in the United States, but in fact US-based corporations that make hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars every year. Specific uh, task of hooking up to a marijuana farm and working right. Quote unquote, this debt off for these people that help smuggle them in here, but they just simply smuggle slave labor uh, so they can maximize their profits working on these farms. Slaves. Let's be clear about that. Slaves. There are more slaves right now on earth than ever in recorded history. Did you know that? Yeah. Oddly enough, than ever. Migrants aren't because of situations that. like this. Neither are prisoners. Slaves. Say in it. U.S. prisons. Do something about it. People who want to teach that America is uniquely responsible for the evil of slavery historically as though it doesn't exist across the globe. And it's still happening today in the United States in these situations because of the fact that people who are paid to represent us don't enforce their own laws. Now, we also spoke with the Oklahoma junior senator, uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, or at least his office, and they confirmed that there is a significant concern regarding the influx of uh, Chinese migrants. Oh yeah, no, this is walking this everyone is China to the taking doorstep of making Nazi apologies. Knowing apology that they can be facilitated 100%. both drugs and personnel across the southern border. And Oklahoma doesn't get talked about a whole lot uh, necessarily in the border conversation, but they should because Texas, of course, is always under the gun. Now, of course, these Chinese migrants slash often uh, slaves or indentured servants, if your white guilt gets the better of you, they don't always come directly through the border. Uh, oftentimes, they're actively recruited from other cities like Los Angeles or New York. And after a little digging, we were actually able to locate some of these job postings. Here are a couple of examples uh, of the recruitment ads luring Chinese workers to Oklahoma. Farm recruitment requires diligence, quickness, and no fuss. Experienced people will be given priority. Oklahoma regular farm urgent recruitment. Pause. If someone specifies regular farm, it's not a regular farm. Able to endure hardships and stand hard work. Quick at work without fuss. Responsible, good hygiene. Novice or experienced male workers are welcome. Now, in both of these ads, first off, they really have a thing about fussing. So if you want to be a Chinese slave working at a grow farm, fussing is, it can't be in your wheelhouse. Uh, but they also oh, listed compensation as negotiable. And applicants were given this directive. When contacting, please say you are in Saw It on the American Jobs website. And that last one, in my opinion, is too broad. Is it Craigslist? Is it TaskRabbit? Or is it ChineseSlave.com? 
Luckily for us, they both included phone numbers, so we decided to give them a call and see exactly what it was that they were offering, with no fuss, mind you. I saw your job listing on American Jobs Network recruiting farm workers for Oklahoma. Is this the correct number? Yeah, exactly, Shakespeare. I used to commit. I used to commit all of the drug crimes before going wholesome a decade and lifetime ago. No one is getting their green from Oklahoma even today. Never then. Never any time. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like generally speaking, anyone outside of Oklahoma is probably getting their weed from more local sources or like more prestigious sources. You know, like. If, if if anything, if your choice is between like your local skunk and your your uh, Oklahoma weed, I think a lot of people are going to go with the skunk. My God. Oh, no. Right now we got people working on Oh, okay. Do, do, do you know anybody else that's hiring right now? I have a bunch of people looking for work. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Mm, okay, well. Are you sure it's uh, for a job in Oklahoma? I have some people that may be interested. Uh, no, I'm not hiring people too close. Oh, are, is this American Job Network? No. No, 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 no. Two things here. One, that's convenient. Two, they clearly had absolutely no idea what we were talking about due to the severe, almost comical Chinese accent, which, by the way, you've noticed I haven't done once here, which is really hard because I want to do it, and these people are criminals. Now, one reason they might not have wanted Man, Steven Crowder can't even, like, pretend to not want to do a racial caricature. He can't even, he can't even hold it together for, like, a one-hour-long special, you know? Like, this guy sees, like, your average African-American and immediately wants to, like, shapeshift into Al Jolson, okay? Like, it's, it's insane. It's insane. It wasn't even a strong accent. It it wasn't. My God. Wanted white Americans to know uh, what they're up to is, you know, these recruiting agencies are basically sending workers into slave labor camps. Our source, though, on the ground, and Mr. Woodward at OBN, both spoke on this. Well, the Chinese people, it's, it's a few that run everything, and everyone else is living very, very hard by. Um, you know where I live, where I just told them they had six degree houses and they put one family per degree house to run it. Each family had a 10 by 10 room. My parents, kids, children, all lived in a 10 by 10 room. I've seen these rooms. Some of have floors and cross shoes running under them. One bathroom for 15 families. They have one dining hall that go out into the woods. Uh, someone will put two miles tall to fill all. They'll put that up in a big lock of bags and feed everything. Is this essentially a human trafficking operation by other means also? Well, for the boots on the ground, the true farms themselves, it's slave labor. So they see it as, you know, these people will get paid. We talk to them once we serve search warrants on these farms and through interpreters. Some of them will say they haven't been paid yet. They're being told I'll be paid once I, you know, once, once our farm makes a profit. They're living in sometimes 16 men in one mobile home with no running water, working plumbing. Uh, it, it just absolutely deplorable conditions. But it, it's almost like we should, I don't know, make them like give them a pathway to citizenship so they could live here legally instead of having to hide in uh, and accept like the most atrocious working conditions imaginable. It's almost like um, Steven Crowder doesn't realize he's advocating for like granting these people citizenship and protections from this type of treatment. I, like, it's it's crazy to me that Steven Crowder makes this into, like, anti-Chinese triad. Like, a thing that's not a, pro not a huge problem in the United States, mind you. When instead, like, the story here is, like, the way our system 
abuses migrant labor, a thing that is, in fact, a widespread problem across America and not unique to Chinese triad weed farms in Oklahoma, in fact. <laughs> My God. But sadly, through interpreters, they say, I'm happy. They won't complain because they say through interpreters, this is a step up. You should see how my family's living back in China. Uh, so that breaks your heart. These are victims themselves, but they won't complain. And so we can't oftentimes file human trafficking or labor trafficking on them. But yes, absolutely, it's slave labor for these farms. And if that isn't bad enough, the trafficking operations, of course, aren't just limited to, to farm workers. Anytime you have human trafficking, it involves sex trafficking. Oklahoma law enforcement often uh, finds these brothels in more upscale neighborhoods throughout the state. If you get into the sex trafficking too though, because there's also a lot of Asian females, specifically China and Japanese, that were brought into this to cater to these workers. And so we have identified underground uh, Asian brothels that operated out of residential locations in Oklahoma, where through these underground- Can I just say it's very funny to me that like, even though this was clearly shot in studio, Steven Crowder couldn't be bothered to do like these interviews himself. You know, like he, he couldn't be bothered to actually have this conversation. He like passed it off to like some guy we've literally never seen before. Who hasn't been introduced Who we don't know. And. Wait, the are they talking about Japanese now? Like what? Oh, okay. Specifically China and Japanese that were brought into this to cater to these workers. And so we have identified underground uh, Asian brothels that operated out of residential locations in Oklahoma where through these underground websites, they- Man, it's so, it's so cool how they play like stereotypically exotic music throughout the, this entire video. That, that, that's super cool. Yeah, so now now we're talking like we're talking the Chinese triads and the Japanese yakuza uh, teaming up to uh, run weed farms in Oklahoma, a place you would definitely want to run weed farms in instead of anywhere else. A, a place where you can legally run weed farms. You know the the Chinese triads and the um. Japanese Yakuza famous for getting involved in perfectly legitimate business practices <laughs> in perfectly legitimate and legal business. Yeah. Wild, wild stuff. Bring in workers from, and not typically the, the, the marijuana workers themselves, but more the managers and administrators of these farms, the people with real money. Uh, they would come into these houses in multi-million dollar neighborhoods um, for, for prostitution and ketamine. We're inter intercepting a lot of ketamine, which is really big in the Chinese culture. Um, we've seized more ketamine out of uh, since Oklahoma legalized marijuana uh, than we had in my previous you know, 28 years with our agents. And it's because of that Chinese culture. So these brothels where, where, there's, where there's ketamine trafficking and sex trafficking, and we talk to some of those women when we serve search warrants, and they absolutely said we are victims. We, we are not willing participants, and we have been able to get some of those females help now this may come as a surprise uh the world of international narcotics and sex trafficking isn't all glitz and glamour it does come with some hoops to jump through financial legal and a lot of these prospective entrepreneurs uh do so now here we have bill jones the california department of cannabis controls chief of law enforcement it's a really difficult title bill you gotta shorten it he said in a March uh, Politico article, these organizations, I can't overstate how much effort they take to layer or protect their identity. You don't have heads of the Chinese or Mexican cartels buying these properties. Lucky for them, they have plenty of help. So some credit here, a lot of the inspiration that led to us investigating this story uh, came from our tip line uh, through a journalist in Maine named Steve Robinson. Now, Mr. Robinson is working on a similar story of Chinese nationals taking over the weed industry in, in Maine. During his research, he noticed that a lot of mortgages to the Maine grow farms were provided by New York headquartered uh, Quantic Bank. Uh, 
among their many services, Quantic lists on their website uh, specific financing to help foreign nationals acquire U.S. property. According to their own description, our foreign national mortgage loans may be the perfect home financing solution for non-U.S. citizens looking to invest in U.S. real estate. We assess your overall financial profile, not limiting your chances due to paperwork or documentation obstacles. You know, like the law. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. And then hey, slap. What do you think this is? The Indian? Yeah, yeah. It, it turn. It turns out there are many organizations that will help you do things more effectively while still maintaining legal, <laughs> le le legal barriers. <laughs> like that's not. That's not crazy. That that happens all the time. Hey guys, you you know who else will help you uh like get out of some sticky legal situations? Accountants. Ta tax ta like accountants for taxes. You, you know who else will help you get out of sticky legal situations? Lawyers. Sh shock at you face. Fun fact, it's legal to purchase ketamine from India years ago. You had to buy it as tiger tranquilizer. If you didn't have a private zoo with tigers, only then was it a felony trafficking crime. The U.S. had extremely tax private zoo law, extremely lax private zoo laws for a long time. That's crazy, dog. Minneapolis 500, knock it off! We were lucky enough to speak with Mr. Robinson and uh, learn a little more about how Quantic initially appeared on his radar. Yeah, so I think this this all really started in August when the Daily Caller News Foundation uh, reported on a leaked memo. It was uh, really just a, uh, some, a picture that someone took of an email that had circulated amongst uh, Border Patrol, Department of Homeland Security, that said that there were uh, 270 or more uh, illegal Chinese marijuana growing facilities operating in the state of Maine. When the memo came out, it didn't have any details about where these properties might be. Uh, but I communicated with uh, Jenny Tare, the reporter who uh, uh, broke that memo, and she actually came up here to do some first-hand investigating. And we took the properties that were on, her, uh, a, I guess, a partial list that she got, uh, maybe 12 different addresses. And we pulled the deed information from the, uh, the county registry office just to see who the uh, property belonged to. And one thing we noticed based on looking at those was that this same bank was popping up over and over again, and it's Quantic Bank. Naturally, we wanted to see if these bastards had any footprint in Oklahoma. Spoiler, they do. These bastards do. They certainly do. Now, our search of Oklahoma public records turned up a slew of results for Quantic, mostly mortgages on rural properties. These properties are located all over the states. Here's an example of this property in Hominy, Oklahoma, sits on a 47-acre lot in the middle of nowhere. Prairie views, open land, good for sex trafficking. I don't know, 47 acres is your oyster. These other two located in Seminole and Sayre. I, I, like, genuinely, chat. This is like opening up Zillow and just being like, ah, you see, rural, rural housing is isolated and also cheap. Therefore, crimes must happen there. Right, you you guys get that right? Like that—that's what he—that's the only thing he's doing here. I, like not 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 only that. Like it's like, it, are you implying like all all people who live in rural areas are criminals because they live in isolated like uh, areas with lots of land? <laughs> like what what what? The implication here that he's making is a, is a lot wider than I think he would actually want to. He's cosplaying 60 Minutes. Well, yeah, it's, it's 60 Minutes plus racism and nonsense. Possess what seem to be uh, already massive greenhouses. Perfect for your tomato hobby. 
or narcotics and unwilling prostitutes. This property in Howe has three oh, massive sure. storage facilities that would make for perfect grow houses. And this... It has three massive storage facilities that would make for perfect grow houses. Yeah, that's probably because they were greenhouses, bud. Th th that's probably because they were greenhouses used for growing things. You know, like tomatoes. Or, or herbs. Or any number of other crops. Or, or plants to sell. I... Crowder, when he sees a greenhouse, there could be weed in there. Th there could be weed, and it could be grown by an Asian person who could be a member of the Chinese triad. Slowly, a piss, sta <laughs> piss stains his pants. Like, my God. <laughs> Ranch house in Stroud, which doesn't stand out other than the fact that the buyer of the property comes from Queens, New York. And? Remember earlier when Mark Woodward from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics told us that most of the heads of <laughs> the case closed, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. The guy who bought this house is from New York City. Clearly must be a criminal. No one from New York would ever move to a farm. Crazy nonsense. Of these illegal grows came from Flushing, New York. This is crazy. Flushing in a neighborhood where. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! Queens! So, the same bank <laughs> oh that lent money to illegal marijuana growers in Maine also lent to borrowers in Oklahoma, including those from Flushing, Queens, the hub of China's illegal weed empire in the United States. Now, that's compelling, I would say, but that's me, Mr. Traditional. It doesn't stop there. Following up further on the main wires reporting, we cross-referenced Quantic's Oklahoma mortgage documents for the name Ying Chan Wang. Real name. Stop. Don't get mad at me. Ying Chan Wang, yeah, who along, along with officer. another man named Stephen Ho, real name, signed off on a majority of the loans. Does, does he think that by saying their names, he's... Like, people are going to think he made up the name? No one would think that unless they were racist. Like, I, I, think, I think he's saying that because he's trained an audience to think that if he says a name like that, he's saying it as a joke because, haha, they're Asian. Like he's say he's literally having to remind his audience that like I'm I'm not being racist right now. This this is just their Asian name. In Maine. Now what did we find? Nearly all of Quantic's Oklahoma mortgages with Chinese names were signed off by Wang or Ho. Again, with Wang appearing on most of them. Wang is a loan officer at Quantic's Astoria headquarters. Now, she earned her master's degree in uh, public affairs at the University of weird. Texas, but attended undergraduate at Zhejiang. Hope I'm saying that correct. So now he's just like profiling like a random bank loan officer. W was this person convicted of a crime or something? Or is this just a random person? Like, yeah, just just highlighting random people who are Chinese. Directly, but I don't care. University in Hangzhou, a city on the eastern coast of her native China. Xuechang University, close enough like most in China, of course, has strong, if not direct, ties to the Chinese Communist Party. In 2004, the China's People's Liberation Army, right, the PLA, posted an ad specifically at the university on their website to recruit people for Unit 61398, a hacking and espionage arm of said PLA. In 2017, visiting scholars from the university formed a Communist Party cell at UC San Diego to discuss Xi Jinping's speeches, and it was hard to distinguish them from other communist groups at said university. Okay. We could tell by the height. Now, 
Do we know this? Is Wang a CCP spy? We can't make that claim. Oh. Because that seems like that's the claim you're making. Also, like, yeah, people in college talk about communism. It's it's true. That it, that is that is a fact, actually. Yeah, we 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 can't we can't actually say that she's a spy, because that would be illegal. But um, you know. But we can say, according to one official statement, she's on the radar of Oklahoma authorities. Now, wanting to give her a chance for what? to explain things for herself, we decided to give Miss Wang a call. Quantic's name is now appearing on mortgages in Oklahoma that are suspected of being illicit marijuana operations. And uh, unfortunately, your name and Mr. Ho's name, uh, Stephen Ho's name, is on a lot of these mortgages. And I was just wondering if you knew that that was the case. I'm going to have to um, send you to my uh, um, PR person at the firm, and uh, um, you can speak to her about this. No, I, w I would love to do that. Um, and again, we're not saying that this has anything to do with you necessarily. We just we would really like to speak with someone at your bank because we want to know kind of what the process is that's letting let so me give many... you. Let me give you her name. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Her name uh, Casey. Okay. And uh, her number is 646. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. That, that's great. Okay. Now, we should have seen that coming, considering that it was old supervisor hang-up. But that's a far cry from the reaction she had when uh, she spoke to Mr. Robinson in Maine a few days prior to our phone call. Those, according to my investigation, those properties are actually being used as illegal marijuana growing operations controlled by Chinese foreign nationals. Yeah. I'm wondering if you had any knowledge of that uh, when you were originating the loans. Oh, they were all, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're actually on a Department of Homeland Security list flagged as uh, controlled by uh, Asian transnational organized crime. Oh my God. So you had, you, you had no knowledge I'm... when you were originating those loans? No, I never met those people. Oh my God. Now, of course, they never got back to us. They passed us off to the chief empowerment officer who's a patsy for the higher ups so once these operators set up shop in oklahoma they need help getting their business off the ground and to do so they have to meet a series of industry regulations so according to oklahoma law licenses are available for oklahoma residents who are at least 25 years old applicants must provide documents establishing the applicant and the members managers and board members if applicable and 75 percent of the commercial applicants ownership interests are oklahoma residents as required in the oklahoma medical marijuana and patient protection act ah yes the patients forgot about them at least those Chinese slaves are keeping these patients medicated. That last part, by the way, is crucial. 75% of the ownership must be Oklahoma residents. So how do Chinese nationals operating on behalf of crime syndicates, who presumably are not Oklahoman citizens, skirt the regulations? Well, they have help from fixers. And you had these entities, like I said, these law firms, that would step up and say, don't worry about your 75% owner. You pay us a fee, we're going to get you a license, and that will include, we will find somebody to put down as your 75% owner. So on the surface, you're going to look legit. Uh, so when they do a background, and, and because that's all you need to get a license in Oklahoma, right. they pay 500 bucks and pass the background, which is no felony in five years. And so they made sure that the person on the license has a 70 That doesn't sound accurate at all. You, you would need to have a financial stake in order to claim 75% ownership. Like, if, I, if I'm understanding this right, or if they're even portraying it right.
How did these conspiracy theorists get a sizable audience? Uh, Annie Bo, it's literally because um, Stephen Crowder caters it to an audience of, of racists who like seeing racists be racist. That, that's, that's like his entire appeal. 75% primary owner. Is it's comedy. Clean. One such person who uh, jumped out on our radar was a consulting officer out of Oklahoma City called Mama Ma. That's right, Mama Ma. Fun to say, easy person to dislike. A former Oklahoma grower writing uh, to us on the condition of anonymity actually outlined the work that Mama Ma does. Something else I have learned by doing business with the Chinese is that they all, or at least the ones I've interacted with, are connected with a Chinese lawyer whose offices occupy an entire floor in a high-rise office building in downtown Oklahoma City. I had occasion to visit this office, and while there, I asked the man what his business was. He indicated that he was basically a fixer for the Chinese growers. If they needed services, he would connect them with local providers, such as myself, and he provided help with compliance issues. That seems legit enough on the surface, but if I were seriously looking into this issue, this guy would be high on my list to investigate. Every job I have done for them, I have been paid in physical cash, usually in American $20 bills. It was also confirmed to us that Mama Ma was on the radar, it'll never not be fun to say, of law enforcement in Oklahoma. So in March, 2022, this same company, Mama Ma, filed a lawsuit against Xu Xinqi for defamation. Now that lawsuit identified the owner of Mama Ma Consult LLC as one Yi Yao Fu, uh, known by her English name as Sona Fu, because that's very English, of Flushing, Queens. Now when looking into Fu, we found she also owns a residence in Edmond, Oklahoma. Damn, right. that's crazy, A record search dog. of that property turned up a mortgage. That mortgage was issued by none other than Quantic Bank. And Damn, that's crazy, dog. You, you mean a bank would just do that, give someone a loan? Wild stuff, man. Really groundbreaking here. Um, yeah, rents, rents in Minneapolis are, I mean, they're not low by any means, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd recommend some some uh, some good neighborhoods if you're interested. But uh, why is that though? Because uh, it's in the Midwest. Currently, I think it's more expensive to live out like outside of the city than it is inside the city. So yeah. As far as I can tell, most of the uh, rent is like around like fifteen or sixteen, okay or. 15, 1600. Somewhere in there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And signed off by Stephen Ho, the same loan agent attached to multiple property purchases of weed farms in Maine and suspected weed operations in Oklahoma. Further investigation into Fu, English name also revealed that she is a certified notary public. So on October 24th, 2023, no, uh, not a notary usage public. permit application for JN Operations and owner Zhu Shi Ni. On December 2024, Shu was arrested and charged with illegal cultivation and drug trafficking. Now, looking into JN Operations LLC, we also found that it was filed for by an Oklahoma attorney named Matt Stacy. Stacy, among other things, is a decorated veteran, a state Senate candidate, and he was appointed by current Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt to head the state's COVID response team. Oh, and Mr. Stacy is listed as the primary contact for 320 marijuana licenses, or about three and a half percent of all marijuana licenses in Oklahoma. And in February, 2022, he was charged with 13 felony counts related to illicit marijuana again if we legalize all of it there will be no illicit market in an attempt to obtain some kind of comment from yi yao fu directly um the team here traveled to mama ma's downtown oklahoma city location and it got 
Spicy? <laughs> like not level, like if it's, you know, the level one to five on takeout. Four, you don't order five, that's just, they're just, that's just to harm you. So it got to level four when we caught up with Mrs. Fu on a conference right. call with her employees. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi, Hi is Miss Fu in today? Miss Fu? Yeah. The Yao Fu? Yeah, no, scared of the pointer. Uh. No. Is she not? Yeah, we were supposed to meet with her today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing an investigation about the, the marijuana businesses that got shut down. And we found out that she was attached to it, so we wanted to get a comment from her. Uh, we were just curious to know her relationship with Matt Stacy. Amber. There's a lot going on. We're running an investigation. Oh, are you sure? Because we found that you notarized a doc. Miss Fu notarized a document. Oh, okay. That's interesting because we were pointed in this direction for that. Hmm. What about Quantic Bank? Are you familiar with Quantic Bank at all? Quantic Bank out of Queens? Maybe Stephen Ho? No, the thing is, we do closing service. Oh, like okay. Gotcha. Right? If you ask anybody, you have to show him more information because I don't really remember what that is. Oh, um, yeah, that's understandable. But what about, do you know Stephen Ho from Quantic Bank? I think he did the mortgage for you. Stephen Ho? Stephen Ho? I don't really know what that is. Oh, okay. Huh. That's interesting because we found Stephen Ho did the mortgage for you and Quantic has done a lot of lending here as well for um, the marijuana industry. Is there anybody that we can talk to about this? Because it seems that there's, we know that this place is under investigation. So we are just curious who we might be able to talk to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. If you could, we're just very curious to know um, about your relationship or Mama Ma's relationship with Quantic Bank because they're also part of this investigation and we're finding that they have a relationship with Mama Ma and the marijuana industry. It seems like there's a lot of connection going on here. I don't have any personal relationship with Quantic at all. So you're, you're not familiar with Quantic at all? So you've never met with a Stephen Ho? I don't know who that is. Hmm, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. What do you, do you have any? Oh, we don't do mortgage here. But no, I know the mortgage on your house, though, was signed by Stephen Howe. I have no idea who that is, though. Hmm. Is there any way we can get your phone number and we can follow up with you with some questions we might have? Yeah, you ready that for me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. And I'm sorry, who's speaking right now? Yeah, yeah, Fu. Yes, Fu. Okay. So we don't do any mortgage service, and I don't know who that's even is, but I do know the rice stock. I, I do sometimes I provide the, uh, the tea, the uh, papaya, the tea, the that's all of my services. I don't really know who's Quantum Bank or Stephen Hall. Okay, yeah, well, we'd love to talk to you about just how that came to your desk. We're not, you know, not insinuating anything, just curious. But you said 405 0702. Not insinuating anything, though. Oh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. No problem. We're, we're journalists investigating this story right now. So there's there's a lot of different investigations going on that surround this whole thing that my partner just kind of laid out for you guys. So we're just trying to get to the bottom of a few things. And, you know, we have a lot of questions. If, if you can help us, that'd be great. You can see I'm very sick and I don't really have time for journalists. So please leave me alone. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Please leave me alone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. Now, immediately after that interaction, a researcher on this team found something that you would consider straight from a Hollywood script. And not even necessarily one 
that's been redacted for the Chinese market. Now, you remember how Ms. Fu told my reporters that she didn't really know Matt Stacy and that she notarized documents for a lot of people? That could be the case. Uh, as it turns out, Google Street View has excellent photographs of both Ms. Fu's admin residence as well uh, uh -huh. as of JN Greengrow, a shuttered weed farm owned by Xu Jai Ni and fronted by Matt Stacy. A yeah. picture is worth a thousand grams. Now, as you can see, the same two door 28 Robin's Egg Jeep Wrangler is at both locations. And according to Geico Records, that Jeep is registered to Fu's Edmund address. Now, armed with this information, yeah. because you've heard that knowledge is power, sometimes it is. In this case, it was. Uh, my team went back. Yeah, th this seems like very much illegal. Like just, just the, the, this random lady's address and place of business. That wasn't even very confrontational. Crowder lied when he hyped it up as spicy. This entire thing is just absolute lies and bigotry, frankly. Back to see why Miss Fu said she had no knowledge of things she she clearly she clearly knows. Hi. Uh, hi, we were just talking to you upstairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we just wanted to clarify something because we came back and had a discussion. And what we, we, I, I, I have the document right here. I have no idea. Are you sure? Because it is her address, it's Miss Fu's address I mean, in I Edmond, know. Oklahoma. So this, right here on this document we have, it was signed for by Quantic Bank. Approved by Stephen Ho, which she says she has no knowledge of. Am I right? she? I don't know, but oh, right. maybe can we get her number from you? No, because we do have photo evidence of her Jeep at an illicit marijuana farm that she claimed to have no knowledge of, and the same Jeep parked in front of her residence in Edmond, Oklahoma, that was signed for by Stephen Ho at Quantic Bank. That was mortgage. Are you sure? Are you positive? Can we get her number, please? We'd like to clarify this. We don't want to report things that aren't true. Also noteworthy of Fu, she's just filled with criminal nuggets. Is her phone number is listed as the contact number for Wang Shin Fan Mei, a service provider that offers full supervision services for overseas students studying yeah. in America. Now the site is new. It was created on December 26, 2023, and it advertises a relationship, uh -huh. seemingly official, with the University of Oklahoma College of Aeronautics. Having our suspicions, we reached out to a representative directly for the university to see if there was any kind of an official Foo connection. Um, wow, you know, I've, I've never heard normal. that name before, and I don't know why they'd be advertising us because we're a kids program. Yeah. Um, based out of Norman, Oklahoma. So, um, can you tell me what that website is so I can look into it? Sure. Um, by the looks of it, they just kind of copy pasted your website's homepage onto theirs. Um, it's called Wang Xin Fan Mei, so it's W A N G X I N. F A N S A N Mhm mm M E I dot com. Yeah, well, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I will definitely look into that, and I'll probably have to get OU legal involved. After exhausting the willingness of Mamamas employees to talk, we decided to contact Stephen Ho, the man who signed Miss Fu's mortgage, and see what he had to say. See, I'm a, you know, I'm a Texan American, and I don't. I, I'm not a, you know, anyone to do any illegal activities. Just to, so I have this clear, you don't know off the top of your head, you don't know Yi Yao Fu. I do not. Okay. It was, it was a very busy time in those last couple of years, so um, I do not know anyone specifically. Um, what was Quantic's response when they were made aware that so much of their financing was leading, was helping facilitate this? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, you'd have to ask them. I don't know, you know, how they reacted. You know, that, that might have been a PR level for them that I was not part of. 
Okay. Well, I, I really don't know. Yeah. How much would you have to look into each individual loan that you were issuing? Like about the prospective borrower, like the like the quality control, how much would you have to look into the, the prospective borrower before you decide, or was it just kind of a numbers game for you? Um, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you know, uh, Lynn, like those two years, mm -hmm. any experienced originator were having career years. So um, we were, everyone was so busy. Right, they were just... Uh, they, were, they were doing, yeah. yeah, they were just, you know, taking applications and, you know, double-checking that they qualified and, and, and helping get a loan. Uh, you know, in hindsight, now that, you know, this is, you know, you're the, I don't know which question, how many people have come to like, in hindsight, now the, the question I need to ask, not that they'll, be, they'll give me an honest answer, but to ask those extra questions. By the way, what are you going to do to this property? Now, to be fair, it does seem like Ho was unaware of exactly what Quantic was up to. He may be an idiot, but it also looks like Quantic operated with the attitude of it's best not to ask questions. Okay, so let's back up. We now know so that, that New York-based Quantic Bank financed the purchase cool. of multiple properties in Oklahoma, as well as illicit weed farms in Maine. All right, these mortgages are signed off by Ying Chang Wang or Stephen Ho. These are the loan originators. Quantic, led by Stephen Ho, also wrote the mortgage for an Edmond, Oklahoma property purchased by Yi Yao Fu, who also has a property in Flushing, Queens, the hub of China's United States drug network. Now, in addition to being the primary contact for a service provider to Chinese students in America that may or may not exist, Yi Yao Fu is just, just, just as an FYI, main. Maine allows marijuana to be grown legally. Uh, like, I, I want to know more about the, uh, the these illegal weed farms in Maine. <sighs> like, they passed a bill called the Marijuana Legalization Act. Now they do need cultivation licenses, but like, he's saying that, I, I, I don't know to what extent the bank would be involved in whether or not the, the farm had a cultivation license. You know, maybe, maybe all you need to present to them is like a valid business plan that is contingent on getting one of those growing licenses. But anyway, the f entire framing of this video is so weird and disingenuous. The owner of Mama Ma Consult LLC based out of Oklahoma City. Mama Ma Consult LLC helps Chinese nationals obtain marijuana grow licenses in Oklahoma by helping them circumvent industry standards as chill as they may be, including the requirement that 75% of the farms must be owned by an Oklahoma resident. Ms. Fu acts in this role herself. Fu is a public notary. Yep. She notarized a groundwater usage permit application for Jane Operations LLC in Shujini. The farm has subsequently been shut down Just and the owner arrested as of December 28th. On Twitch. Only 500k more to go. Catalina Gearbox, thank you for the f thank you for being with me for uh, 500k channel points and thank you for the $5 dono. I very much appreciate it. Speaking of folks, we've been going for about 4 hours now. And uh, I would just ask that you hit the follow button over on Twitch, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, hit the like button on the YouTube stream, and uh, please consider dropping some subs or donos, because those are what keep me alive, and I forgot to make a plug for it an hour ago. So uh, please, uh, please consider throwing uh, some of your hard-earned dollar dues my way, because uh, I need them to not die pay for things like rent and food and medicine. I really appreciate all y'all. Uh, just jumped in what's being discussed. Uh, uh, Steven Crowder is trying to allege that there is a rampant problem uh, with the Chinese triads infiltrating Oklahoma to illegally grow weed, which is the silliest thing. I I never knew I never knew I wanted to think about
How you doing, Alice? If I ever get this lawsuit settled, I'm going to hit you up with a nice little dono. I really appreciate that. Thanks for reminding me when you're at the top. Remind, remembering me when you're at the top. There we go. Riverboat Jack is sponsored by Monster Energy. If only I was rolling in those sweet, sweet monster dollars. But no, I'm sadly not. Was any of this stuff on Hunter's laptop? Hunter Biden actually personally flew in every member of the Chinese triad. It's true. It's true. It was, it's all on the laptop. <laughs> anyway, uh, think about dropping those subs and donos because I like not dying and I like continuing to make content. Let's go. 2023, JN Operations has listed as a primary contact one Matt Stacy, an infamous Oklahoma attorney with personal relationships with the governor and point of contact for more than 300 marijuana farms in Oklahoma. Stacy has also been charged with 13 marijuana related felonies. So to sum this all up, Quantic loaned money to multiple Chinese nationals in Oklahoma, including the owner of Mama Ma Consult, Yi Yafu, who on at least one occasion worked Hand in Get Jack face on a monster energy can so the chuds will boycott Jesus it. Jesus Christ. I, I don't know. I think I think monster energy could probably do better than my face. Uh let's see. I will also say that like all of these are very nebulous accusations. Quantic Bank loaned money. <gasps> Gasp to multiple Chinese nationals. Gasp. In Oklahoma. Gasp. N none of these things so far are legal at all. In glove with Oklahoma's most notorious weed magnet, Matt Stacy, to set up. Okay, just out of curiosity, I want to know what his, uh, his uh, charges for weed were. Matt Stacy, Oklahoma. Is it? Here we go. Takes over prosecution of attorney accused of illegal marijuana operation. Right. See? Charged with 13 felony counts. What were the counts? An affidavit said Stacy acted as a registered agent for more than 300 LLCs that sought commercial licenses to grow and sell medical marijuana. Multi county grand jury indicted Stacy, local attorney, for allegedly obtaining licenses for marijuana farms illegally. Stacy paid state residents to be ghost owners of grow operations for Chinese organized crime operations and other out-of-state clients. This is a method to evade law that requires Oklahoma residents to own at least 75% of a growing operation. I guess I'm just I'm I'm curious to see what I I want to know more about this case frankly. Like there's a whole lot of allegations here, but like I want to I want to see the evidence. I want to see like the court actually present what's going on here. Both the defense and the uh, prosecution. Anyway, an illicit marriage. I, I will. I will say that guy could be scummy as hell, but that's also just three hundred operations in a state with thousands. A lot of farm that is now under seizure order by the state of Oklahoma. 
the end game. Okay, so we've told you about the operations, the destruction, and the players on the ground. But at the end of the day, there's one entity pulling the real strength. It's the and Chinese it's not a Communist crime boss. Party. It's not just a mortgage broker or even a bank. The Chinese Communist Party's cooperation with the triads has been incredibly well documented and has foundations stemming from the handover of Hong Kong by Britain to China in the late 1990s. Writing for the publication Foreign Policy, J. Michael Cole describes this evolution um, as it relates to the relationship. By the 1990s, triads were well established Jesus in both Christ. Hong Kong and Taiwan, and the CCP had gone from seeing them as a brutal opponent to a useful tool. After the handover, the relationship evolved in what- Y'all saw that, right? That was scary as hell. I did not like that was now Chinese territory pro-Beijing gangsters threatened and on a few occasions physically assaulted activists and the few media outlets that remained critical of Beijing. So pro-Beijing gangsters have remained active in suppressing any type of anti-communist Chinese sentiment, including in 2017 when triads assaulted a group of pro-Hong Kong democracy protesters at the Hong Kong airport. We also know that the CCP and the triad work hand in glove when it comes to money laundering. For example, in 2021, the Commission of Inquiry into Money Laundering in BC revealed that uh, a Chinese national earning about 40,000 a year, decent income, purchased $32 million worth of real estate in Vancouver, Canada. And we know that it's a country that's good at math. It doesn't add up. A related uh -huh, summons racism. showed that between 2011 and 2020, Hong Kong depositors moved $166 million into BC accounts. Unsurprisingly, these depositors were linked directly to organized crime and the CCP, with one depositor being a member of China's foreign influence program. So that brings us to our story. Right back. We know these operations connect far beyond Oklahoma we know they have international ties, including the Mexican cartel. A U.S. Treasury official tells NBC News that Chinese criminal organizations are operating in the U.S. and now working with Mexican cartels by helping them launder money made from meth, fentanyl, and other drugs. These Chinese entities with direct connections... ...grenades incorporating such urine are likely to prove more potent. Are you fucking with me? the resulting weapon, the OnePlus. Try using one against the next BT you come across. Oh, and if your condition persists, it may be prudent to consult a doctor. They use his blood piss to make special grenades. What the hell, dude? Disgusting. Since the communist Chinese government facilitating drug trap, namely fentanyl, okay, for the Mexican cartels, it's such an open secret that it took center stage November 2023 in a meeting between Joe Biden and Xi Jinping in San Francisco. Biden said that he and Xi got to restart cooperation too in countering narcotics. They got to talk about yeah, the fentanyl crisis and year. the production of those precursors to fentanyl, those precursors, the chemicals that are produced in China. So the question becomes, are these Chinese crime organizations really operating independently of the Chinese Communist Party? After all, it's kind of difficult to believe that the world's largest surveillance state could be so blind to such large-scale, burning, smelly operations. As it turns out, Beijing isn't blind. Maybe not the best peripheral vision, but not blind. And in fact, they're utilizing these criminal organizations for their own means. Here's a leaked Border Patrol memo that laid out exactly how profits from illicit marijuana operations flow directly back to China. And of course, these profits can be quite uh, lucrative. It's immensely profitable if you have slaves doing the work. That's kind of a big thing. More slaves right now on Earth than ever in recorded history. You can look it up. You can use my source or any source available to you because of situations like this. Now, according to Mr. Woodward at OBN, they've intercepted truckloads of marijuana worth at least $28 million. Mr. Woodward went uh, into detail uh, on the Chinese government's involvement, specifically in Oklahoma. It comes as a shock to me that these large-scale organizations could be operating in the United States in such a large degree without some sort of at least tacit approval 
from the Chinese Communist Party. Have you, is there any link there that you've seen or identified where you at least see involvement or kind of approval from the CCP? Is there any indication of that at all? Well, there's a hundred. Well, Shana, I think a lot of times they have the sense of humor of a middle schooler, largely because a lot of them cease developing their ideas in middle school. You know, they they le they they learn and internalize the beliefs from middle school, and then just never feel inclined towards challenging themselves and changing and growing beyond that. You know. It's, it is a mindset mired in the past, and they just never grow out of it. Why is this Drew, dude dressed as Macklemore? Because uh, when you're conservative, this is what uh, tells people that you're both Christian and cool. L literally. Dr dressing like Macklemore is like, the epitome of like evangelical cool vibes. Not a joke. Hundred uh, percent evidence that the, the the Chinese Communist Party is absolutely aware of everything that their citizens are doing within the borders of their country and our U.S. borders. Uh, there's no doubt they they monitor everything. They monitor their people, their activities, the month, the movement of the money. Um, it, it's much like with the fentanyl crisis. Uh, you know, China publicly cracked said they're going to crack down on the, the exportation of fentanyl out of yeah. china but privately they, they've done nothing to to stop it and they know exactly what's happening and it's no different with with the chinese um the communist party's involvement in marijuana in the united states this is well documented uh, in, and, and i've seen other documentaries uh, that have aired where where one of the big parts of the chinese communist party one of their their primary goals is one acquire as much U.S. land as you can, and number two, acquire and, and gather as much and collect U.S. currency as possible. And and the, that, that's why people say, why are they involved in marijuana? Because it can accomplish both of those goals. You need thousands of acres of land, sometimes for just uh, a few farms in places like Oklahoma, and it's an all-cash business in 40 states legalized. So uh, that, that's accomplishing their goals. And specifically talking about Oklahoma, I can't get into a lot of details, but I can tell you that we have identified People who are considered national security risks tied to the Chinese Communist Party identified on Oklahoma farms as among these, these people that come and check and monitor uh, the activities of the farms and the workers themselves. They are linked to, to high ranking people within the Chinese government um, that have been that we personally have identified here in Oklahoma on these farms. Now, I'm not a, a Chinese national, but this math adds up. We all know that China has been buying up farmland across the United States. And they've been securing troves of hard U.S. currency. At least, well, uh, I hope Make you sure know. You carry pizzas if not, if, now you know. If you do and even though like China dollars. claims it wants the world to convert to their own currency, the Yuan, they reportedly have more than $3 trillion in foreign currency that is off the books. They're Eddie Haskelling it. You're the one that did it. Yeah, but if you go around squealing on guys, nobody's gonna like you. To further understand the Chinese Communist Party's uh, goals here, we reached out to John Cassera, a former Cold War intelligence officer and a special agent at the U.S. Treasury who told us this. Regarding direct links between the CCP and transnational crime, you must understand that China is a command state, whether it be the fentanyl trade or the online advertising for illegal products, organ harvesting, illicit tobacco, counterfeiting, which represents about 2% of China's GDP, illicit fishing, human trafficking. None of this could happen without the CCP's consent. Chinese actors in the United States cannot be here without the permission of the central government. What do they have to gain? President Xi has publicly stated that the West is declining and China is ascending. Criminal activity has become so part of China's other, strategy like, to grow there, its power there's so in conjunction much stretching with going its authoritarian here. statecraft, military buildup, espionage, class theft, ever deception, been trade, loans, debt traps, payoffs, influence operations, etc. to structure a 21st century with Chinese... Non-aesthetic witch, uh... Stephen Crowder is trying to allege that Chinese triads have infiltrated the United States, specifically uh, Oklahoma, in order to carry out the will of the CCP um, 
in undermining America and expanding their power here. Uh, yeah, the, there's also a little bit of the Yakuza in the mix. Mm hmm. Chinese, quote, characteristics. Look, the aim of the CCP here is pretty clear. Xi Jinping has stated himself that he intends to see the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And we have internal CCP memos that outline a strategy showing that this rejuvenation means displacing the American order and instead replacing it, instituting Beijing's own. So of course they would want to own United States farms. And of course they would want to be involved with the illicit marijuana industry in Oklahoma. But it's just one tool that Beijing is using to enrich itself and undermine the United States. But sometimes when the scope feels so big, you get lost in this game and forget that there are real life consequences for everyday Americans. You get lost it's in the killing, sun. absolutely killing the legitimate industry. As I said before, the first two years, we probably had close to three, 4,000 farms, and most of those were run by just local people trying to make a go of it. So the market was already oversaturated. And then you have an influx of 5,000 more farms that are we've linked back to Mexican organized crime, Chinese organized crime, that try to look legitimate on the surface, but they're all criminal and they're growing for $100 a pound. We're going to undercut legitimate. legitimate growers, for sure. Yeah, legitimate growers cannot compete. They're having to grow for $800 a pound, and they say I can barely make payroll. It's not exactly healthy or positive or strengthening America to have this happening uh, right in our backyards. Who's this? Uh, you know, it's, it's making the cost of living far more expensive everywhere. It's destroying Maine's housing stock, it's reducing our available housing supply, increasing the price of electricity. It's bad for the environment. And oh, by the way, the, the product that they're producing is laced with pesticides and fungicides. It's not tested, it's not regulated, it's not up to standard of the legal product that comes out of Maine. In order to sell it legally, it would still have to be all of those things. <laughs> And one of the one of the fungicides that they use is called Eagle 20, and it's approved for use on your tomatoes because you know it's going to be okay if you eat it, but when you smoke it, it turns into cyanide gas. Ready out this door. They, they killed our American dream out here. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> that's that's what me and my wife saved up, and this was all in with our family to do. You know, I was going to build a farm out here and a house and live the rest of my life, and this is what I wanted to do. And, I feel like that was wrong. And those are just the Americans who know about it, who've seen the screw job take place. It could just as easily be you. When you have foreign entities who have specifically stated that their goal is to subvert the Western American way of life and to do so through operations within your own country, how many businesses have been shattered? How many people who've gone missing? How many, how many years of record border crossings with people in our elected representative establishment who do nothing about it? At what point does that damage you? For all of the seeing damage. Yeah, exactly, Zakina. What, what is seeing damage that can't even begin to be quantified? You like, feel it. Like what? Every day. And right now we're showing you what we can verify. But there are intangible variables. You can't put your finger on it. Why? Because no one wants you to put your finger on it. You can't quantify it. Why? Because no one wants you to quantify it. We know it's in the trillions. What? That's a starting point. We know it's in the millions, as far as slaves. We know it's in the hundreds of thousands, as far as illegal border crossings every year. We know that it's in the hundreds of thousands to tens of millions of, of acres as far as American farmland that you may never get back. We know it's in the billions of dollars that was lost during COVID. It was foisted upon us by, again, to some degree, and by some, I mean all degree, the communist Chinese government and complicit representatives who weren't looking out for you. We do what we can here and we appreciate your support. We really do. The Mug Club Undercover Unit here, the investigative journals. None of this will ever happen without your support. Hey, take a guess why. 
because of the communist well, Chinese we're not monetizing any mainstream platform. party. The CCP. The same reason that John Cena had to apologize for acting like Taiwan even existed. It's a growing market. A very powerful government who gets to determine winners and losers with the world's most powerful companies that you depend on every single day for your daily necessities to the information that you can consume. We don't know exactly how deep it goes, but my God, on the surface, it already sucks, doesn't it, John Cena? Wo What a wild way to end this video. Dude. Did you guys see that bizarre Kennedy ad? It Did you guys see that bizarre Steven Crowder video? My God.